Alright. Here we are. We'll check out my electric spider out of the shop in April 2012. Just cleaned it up. It's a uh, 1988 Lotus Esprit chassis with a 1979 Lotus transaxle. And then what I did is I built a custom body out of fiberglass and aluminum. Uh, and I based it on a Porsche Spider. Uh, if you remember from 1955, the James Dean car. And I uh, also like Mercedes from that year. So I did all the paneling myself. I built an, uh, a mold for the tub and uh, made a composite uh, shell that I bolted down in epoxy to a Lotus frame. Uh, you can see from this angle how wide the car is. It's massive wide. Um, it takes away some of the spider look and gives it more of a Mercedes racer look from the 50s. Uh, so I did all these aluminum panels. It's kind of an illusion because the car is not aluminum, but I put the panels over fiberglass um, bucks, and then I would cut out fiberglass from underneath to save weight. But I shaped these panels over all of the fiberglass by hand uh, making sure that I never had to make a compound curve which is uh, anybody who does metal work knows um, is the problem with this kind of thing um, I had forge line make custom wheels with custom offset uh, aluminum I think they're 17 inch uh, this is one of the panels where uh, I had to be real careful. Those are that, that's bent at the limit of a compound curve. Um, this is a Ram air tube to cool the electric motor. They tend to run hot. Uh, my interior, I base it on an airplane. Um, I really love Mustang, you know, airplanes. So that was where I got the aluminum feeling. And then the and it's riveted. Uh, but the interior cockpit is more like a fighter plane. Um, so what you do is you lay down in these seats that I designed. I did the upholstery myself too. Um, and I used aircraft component, components from Aircraft Spruce and um, Wix, I think is the name of the place. And you can see that the Lotus is a backbone chassis. And what I did is I basically hung my uh, entire body on the chassis. Um, that's carbon fiber that I did. That's a Cessna shifter. It's in the same place as the Lotus Shifter um, instruments. I won't bother to go in it at this time, but I'll write it down in the description. The windshield I cut down from a 1957 Chevy rear windshield. Um, in my state, Connecticut, you need to have safety glass and it has to have the uh, stamp on the side that says that um, it's shatterproof and meets the DOT standards. And this one does. Um, it's a teeny bit too narrow, I think. So I'll probably just put a piece of plastic molding on top to pass inspection. Um, for the electric car, that is the kill switch. Uh, one of several safety devices built in so that you don't die if something goes wrong. Um, here's another kill switch right here. Uh, this is the button of death so it's out when you're driving right and you hit it and it cuts everything off the wheel is a grant uh, steering wheel it's removable um, I wanted that feature so that basically so you can get in because um, it's really tight to get in Let's see if I can put this on with one hand sorry about it. I have the doors opening like this, aircraft doors. You don't step on this, step there. Um, these are latches from a Cobra kit car. You know, I pick stuff up wherever I could, wherever I could. This is the outlet for the electrical charger. Um, just a simple outlet uh, that used to be a fuel tank cap. Um, so what's cool about this car, well, besides what I've already told you in my humble opinion, is that it's a 96 volt DC um, 
eight batteries with a motor that's about 26 horsepower. It's an advanced DC motor. This is a panel that I had constructed for the car. The thing in the middle, the big one, is the charger. The one over here is the controller. And um, all the rest are switches and solenoids, all built and wired underneath this panel, which is a heat sink. So it helps a lot. Um, I welded up all these racks, um, tried to keep the weight as low as I possibly could. Um, I succeeded two ways. There's four batteries below the chassis. This one is, I would consider, in the center of gravity. And these three above uh, still are so low um, because the car is only 28 inches tall. Um, I, I believe the roll center is about two feet underground. So if you're going to drive this thing, and you're going to go around a corner, you're not going to have any trouble with your handling. It'll go sideways, slide around a little before it ever rolls over. That's the Lotus Transaxle. Um, Lotus makes amazing cars. I think the actual transaxle axle was made by uh, Renault, uh, I believe, that year. And it's a five-speed. It's aluminum. It's really snickety. It, uh, you know, this is a, a mid-engine car. What I'm going to do now, clumsily, is take off the, um, the panel so you can see the motor. But I don't want to shut off the camera. So if you would just give me a minute. And you can start the fun even earlier when you bring your little one to our family-friendly performance of Jack and the Beanstalk on Saturday, April 21st. Okay, there's the motor. Um, it's not a, you know, a Mongo motor. I didn't want to add weight to this thing anywhere I could. I was trying to balance the weight to a power ratio as much as in, as anything else. Um, this adapter was made uh, to go with the motor and adapted to the Lotus transaxle with um, for the clutch, which is a five-speed. I only plan to make to use like three, four, and five, or two, three, and four. I'll know when I start driving. The transaxle has inboard brakes, which were. Uh, cool for Lotus because it put the uh, center of gravity, you know, lower, uh, excuse me, into the car more to the center. Um, I have fenders for the rear deck. Excuse me, I have fenders for the rear wheels. Um, they're going to be like bicycle fenders, aluminum ones. Um, I made a rear deck, but I didn't do a good job, so it's not there. So right now in April 2012, I got a couple guys over that are going to help me uh, get the whole thing finally wired, the wiring harness. Right now, probably the first job is we're going to work on the um, vacuum brake assembly because with this car it has power brakes that I took off of a Lotus, but they're not powered by an engine, so you need to create your own vacuum. And then what I've got is a kit that will do that from a 12-volt battery. So we're going to plumb and wire that into the front. So one more time around, uh, Dale Robinson's E-Spider. Um, I've done some autocrossing, solo one racing. I've taken the Skip Barber course a couple times at Lime Rock. I intend to get this up there um, on the track. I also like to do some electric car events. Um, I was ranked at one time solo one in New England. Um, so I can make this thing scream and handle, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, just message me, email me. Um, we're going to do this this year, 2012, and I'll keep you posted on our progress.